Here's a look at the Titan ground control station. It's built out of a Pelican case, so it's waterproof and extremely rugged. It comes with a key, which you need in order to turn the system on. So I will go ahead and turn the main power on. As you can see, that gives power to the internal transmitter as well as the computer on board, which runs full Windows 11. Let's take a look at some of the components. Here we have the voltage and amperage that the system is currently consuming, the screen for the internal transmitter as well as buttons to control the screen. Here you've got your main gimbals, pitch and roll, throttle and rudder. These are M9 gimbals, so they're Hall Effect. You've got a speaker system for the computer. You've got your switches here as well as an auxiliary switch. Same thing on the other side, you've got your switches and knobs and your auxiliary switch. Over here you've got a USB expansion, that's USB 3.0 on the latest generation. Here you've got a fully backlit mechanical keyboard that's programmatically controllable. There's the key switch for turning the system on and auxiliary power for powering other devices or charging the system. In the middle you've got a multi-touch trackpad. And on the top, you've got a thousand nit auto brightness display, which is extremely bright in sunlight and adjusts its brightness accordingly with a uh, brightness detecting LED. Let me go ahead and log into Windows 11 here and highlight some of the features of the onboard computer. We've got a quad core Intel Celeron CPU, as well as eight gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. Now I'll highlight some of the gesture control features of the onboard trackpad. You'll see I'm using four finger swipe to go in between desktops. That's Mission Planner. I'll also show you a couple other things since it is running a full version of Windows. We can open up Visual Studio Code and we can take a look at some of the ExpressLRS code which can be modified and flashed through the ground control system. Speaking of which, internally, inside the bottom plate, we've got a one watt Express LRS transmitter, as well as a 5.8 gigahertz VRX for your video, all built in internally to the system. So as you can see here, we've got uh, the code for Express LRS pulled up and I can use this to flash the internal module as well as any external module such as receivers. And we'll take a brief look at the storage options here. So we've got our operating system on a 57 gigabyte SSD and our storage SSD is about a terabyte, which is more storage than you'll ever need. Um, and in terms of battery, it runs on a 4S3P, which is internally on the bottom section. That gives it a runtime of about four to six hours and it can host up to double that. And with a 4S6P, it would have a six to 12 hour runtime. It is currently 3D printed, and the future iterations of this will be laser cut. But as you can see, the current version is 3D printed and joined in different places, yet extremely rigid. Structurally, very rigid. It's got multiple pillars inside to kind of give it strength. But uh, the first prototype has turned out pretty nice. And in the future versions, we will also expose Ethernet as well as other peripherals. Thank you for your time.